down and you know just let the day take its course because that's all I could do anyway. It wasn't nothing that I could really do about the situation. And if I would have just stayed in the state of mind that I was in, it, it wouldn't have been good. You know, that's when the headaches come on and, you know, you're just, frust just frustrated. So, you know, I, I feel like, you know, that was the most high. He just, you know, he, he put it on my mama to call me because I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't know why, but I needed to talk to my mama that day. And when I was talking to her, she was asking me, you know, like, what's wrong and stuff like that. And I was just telling her, like, nothing, mom, just irritated right now. And she was like, is that the same dude? And I'm like, no, it's somebody they know. And she just, you know, she was just like, well, I would just call and say hi and just to make sure you was okay. And I love you and, you know, things like that. So, you know, it's a blessing to have your, your parents in your life. That's why it's a blessing to be in your children's life so you can be in your grandchildren's life. So, you know, that's basically my smooth week. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone else comment, testimony, current event? Hallelujah. Bashalom. Thanks for being here, guys. I've been a little under the weather for the last two weeks. Um, but I'm, I'm pushing through. I got one more week to go. My little weak immune system. You know, let it kick back in in one more week. But it was nice to um, be able to just have this week off. And I just, I, and I did. I pushed myself. I went to work. And I looked at the work that I had to do, and I just was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out for the rest of the week. <laughs> and they thought I was bullshit, but I get you not. I left. I left Ooh. because I know my body, and I knew the task that I had to do. I, I had I, when I went in, I had tested myself because I usually I do about seven miles a day on my own, just walking. I do I hike six flights of steps just to do it, just so I can um, just keep my 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 just keep my strength up and everything and then i i do uh squats just constantly throughout the day uh just to keep my strength up and so that day i had tested myself i did like half a mile and i just i, I felt myself just staggering just barely able to just to walk just from one part of uh the wing to another and so when i got back i just told them like look i'm out for the week my body weak and, I, uh, and they had already knew because I pushed myself the week before, so they knew I wasn't really feeling well. And so um, it was nice. It was nice to be able to take this week out, you know, try to push myself to get some stuff done. And uh, and I was able to up until about Thursday. Thursday, my body was like, no, you need to just sleep. You need to rest. So I slept practically all day Thursday. Um, and felt a little stronger yesterday just a little bit you know but i just get things because i am here but i i just i know my body you know so i just gotta toughen it for one more week you know i usually go through this once or twice a year about this time of year um but i just give thanks not only that uh i'm speaking about how scripture tells you to number your days and you know every day isn't promise so you really have to be appreciative of every you know, moment that you have, you know, the righteous back of what my sister said, you know, just being in your kids' life, being in your children's life. I look at that as a blessing, appreciating your own life, you know, um, just appreciating life itself, the life outside, you know, um, just uh, the squirrels, the bees, just everything, the flowers, just appreciating that now is, is this time to, to bloom and to blossom and you know, to be seen and, you know, their days is numbered. It's just everything's, um, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to um, just see everything in this time and this season. Like I said, this is my season. Usually I'm always sick about this time of year. So I knew it was coming, you know, and I get thanks that it's this month and not next month. I'm going to be sick for my birthday, you know. So I just, I give thanks. Uh, I just, I give, I give thanks and all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else with comment and testimony and or current event? Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the most high. Yah. It's been a wonderful weekend. 
We here, we made it. And, and that's what matters most. That's what matters most. So many people did not get up today. So many people won't, did not wake up to, to be alive this day. So I'm thankful. So give Yahweh a hand. Give Yahweh a hand. You here today. Hallelujah. And you are here because we got a chance to get it right. We got another day to return back to the Most High Yah. We got another day to get to get things back in order for ourselves, for our family, for our future. You know, do you consider? That's something I like to know. What do you consider? Do you consider your ways? Do you consider the time that it is? Like I heard the sister talking about it's the time for the flowers and it's the time for all types of things. The season is changing. You know, we get we in rain, we get sunshine, we got flowers blooming, tools popping up everywhere, children being born, people dying. It's a time. It's a time and place for everything. Isn't it? It's a time to consider. Is it a time to consider? It's a time to consider what's going on. And you know that word consider? That's a that's a huge word. When you're thinking about it, because consider can mean it literally, figuratively, you know, consider God comes in all things to be able to see it, to be able to hear it, to ponder on it. You now, think about it for a minute. Consider what do you consider? Do you consider the time that we in? Do you consider the words that's being spoken? You know, or are you just are you just consumed with just what's going on with you? Do you consider what's going on with others? Do you pay any attention to that? Turn with me if you don't mind. Turn with me if you don't mind to the book of your will. Yahweh is Elohim. Yahweh is Elohim. And that is going to cover this one little section of this chapter. I ain't going to go into the whole thing. I'm just going to touch on a couple of things. Because in the book of your will, it speaks of a disaster that comes upon the children of Israel come that's dwelling in the kingdom of Judah and it came upon them suddenly. Came upon them very quickly. And this, and this brother Yoel was tasked with letting the children of Israel to give them word, to give them instructions to return back to the Most High, to consider their way. Don't go to Yoel chapter one. I'm just gonna go over a couple of things, not a whole lot. I'm not gonna be up here very long, just a hot minute, just to share a little bit of what I've read over, a little bit of what I may have, what I did receive in the book of Yoel chapter one. It says. The word of Yahweh that came to Yoel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children and their children another generation that which that which the palmer worm had left have the locust eaten and that which the locust have left have the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm had left the caterpillar had eaten but your will speaking this word and he's speaking it to everybody. He's like the old men. Give ear. All you inhabitants that's here in this land. Listen. Pay attention. Tell your children of this. Tell your children children of this. 
Let your children tell their children and tell their children's children of this. What, what am I to tell them of what? What am I what am I reminding them of? What am I what do I need to convey to them? Let us uh go to Exodus chapter 10 real quick. What, what, what is this that we need to remember? What is this that we need that he's talking about? In Exodus chapter 10, it says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy sons and of thy sons' sons what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know, know how that I am Yahweh. That's what he, that's what Yoel is tasked with doing. Letting the children know, reminding the old men, reminding everyone of the great power of the most high yah the power that these men have been told about the power that some that have made even be alive maybe maybe i don't think but some that have been rehearsed in their ears from their fathers about the great task that the creator yahweh did unto the children of the pharaoh's house all the firstborn sons all the firstborn beasts how he slaughtered them, how he brought them out of the land with a great hand. How the fear of Israel was all over the Egyptians. Remind these people of how great I am, that I am their Elohim. I am their power. I am their strength. Remind them. Go to Psalms uh, 78. In Psalm 78, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. See, this right here, we already know this word. We don't heard this word. Our grandparents told us this word. They parents told them this word. This word been around for a while. This word ain't new. It's new to some of us. Because some of us just act like we just ain't never heard it before. We ain't never took time to read the word. So yeah, this word is new to us. It say which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. Say we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of Yahweh and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make that they that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Yahweh, in Elohim, and forget not the works of Elohim, but keep his commandments. Those ten commandments we read in Exodus 20, those great commandments that we read, those are the commandments that Yahweh gave to his people. Can I ask you a question, brother? Yes. Uh, I'm all out of praise and glory, baby God. I'm so glad that you're reading this. When I tell you the most high. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm so glad that you're reading this and that you're talking about what you're talking about. Um, because I had a conversation with the youth. And their question was... Um, how can you believe in something that's not fair? And I have I'm trying to meditate on how to ask that question because I don't want 
you know, with a child, scripture say, child, do foolish things. Of course, you're going to say foolish things. You're going to think foolishly. You know, do not. We, even as children, still, um, yeah, we still, in our day and age, we're learning. And so I don't necessarily want the child to be attacked, but I want, uh, it, most I will look for there to be understanding in why this is our way of life, why um, we were the chosen people, why we uh, must abide by uh, Yah's laws, commandments, statutes, ordinances, and things of that nature, you know, um, and being that you are on that path, uh, if the Most High can enlighten you to continue on, um, to, you know, uh, on the road that you on to uh, help um, me with this issue so that I can reach the youth and letting them know, like, you know, I, I, I get it. I understand you You can't see this, but there's it's a lot of things in the world. I'm certain there's something else that you, you believe in that you can't see, but you believe in it, you know. Um, so most I will, if, while you're on this journey and teaching this, if you could help me with it. Uh, if the most I could reach through to you to help me reach through to the youth on how to, because it's a lot of youth that feel that way, mm -hmm. you know, how to believe in the most high, even though you, you can't see it. And, you know, they're, they're not alone because scripture talked about it in Exodus where, um, you know, they when they was when Moses was up in the mountain and they were like, well, he's not, you know. He ain't coming back. Yeah, so, he you know. Gone. I mean, he, we ain't seen him in a long time. You know, and even though they were giving the thanks and praise to him, but not to Yah, you know, but the, the youth isn't alone in feeling that way. There's multiple people that feel that way. So if the most I can reach for the youth to help me give understanding um, to the youth or even help the youth, you know, understand themselves on why this is, this is a journey. This is this isn't something to be, you know, taken lightly. You know, mm -hmm. and, and as a parent, I can't stand back and be like, you know, um, well, okay, good. You don't believe in it, then fine. You know, you know, I'm gonna just let you just do whatever you want to do. Because scripture clearly said, <laughs> uh, hello. Oh, yes. You did this this is this, real. This your job. This is literal. You know. Yes. And so um as a parent, I know I have a duty. And so I, I, I want to do my duty to the most high, first and foremost, by keeping what my job was to do, you know, which also shows me that I, I my sister girl, I know you got a lot going on in your life, but you about to have a whole lot more because now I just added something else to your plate. So uh, most high willing, if you could just help me do that. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the most high, y'all. And it be y'all's will. I definitely will uh, do my best to shed some light on that. But the more is here. Hallelujah. And so I know he is listening and he jotted down as well. So I'm sure he will also um, address that question also. But praise the most high. Yah, hallelujah. And I will restart right here in Psalm 78. <laughs> As it pertains, as, as as you was asking your question, as you was going through your question, you know, this was just coming right back to me here. And he said, and, and I was just looking at it. He said, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. So one thing that I know, the way that I govern, the way that I, I raise my children, was in a manner in which I was raised. You know, they say you teach a child in the way they should go and they shall not depart from there. Or if they shall go astray from that, from the teaching in which you have given them, at some point in time, they shall return back to that teaching. You know, I had that question before. How do you believe in something that you can't see? Well, let me ask this. Ask a question with a question. We breathing, right? Are we breathing? You can take in a deep breath, but can you see air? No, you can't see it. You, what you feel is the wind. 
but you don't see the air. You know what I'm saying? See, there's a lot of things that we, like your spirit, your spirit that's within you, the thing that's making you alive and the thing that's got you living, you don't see your spirit, but you know it's in you, right? Mm -hmm. You know it's there, but that's your spirit. You know, the most high is always around. Just because you may not see him, he's still there. The trees, the animals. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. You feel it? See, you have an imagination, right? What does it mean to imagine? To see something, right? To see something that's not really there yet. Just. See, and you go into your imaginary, you get into your imagination. You know, that's something when we was growing up, they just always tell us about our imagination, you know, and how powerful the mind is and how powerful imagination is and what you can image and what you can see, you know, all through your imagination. Sometimes little, little babies be playing and they be laughing and giggling and carrying on and you be looking at it. Who is they playing with? They playing with somebody? Because why are they laughing so hard? They in their own little world just doing their own thing. Because imagination. And I believe in the most high y'all. I believe he's always present. You always feel it. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been somewhere and you was there but you start to get this little sensation. It's like a little, maybe maybe some people call it butterflies, but you get this little tingling. You know what I'm saying? You somewhere and you get this little tingling. It used to be like on the back of your neck or, or deep in your gut. And all of a sudden you, you, you start feeling a little nervous or you start feeling a little uneasy. Have you ever experienced that before? Have anybody ever had that happen to them before? What was that? You don't know. You couldn't see it. But it was telling you something. And maybe it was hitting to you. You might be in danger. So you might start going down this alleyway and you was like, something came over you and you was like, ooh, nah, I ain't going to go that way. I'm going to go this way. Senses, feelings, certain a lot of things you are not going to be able to see, but you will be able to feel. You know, the most high is like that too. You may not necessarily see the most high, but you will feel. It. He always around, he's always present, he's always showing us something. And the things that we learn, we learn from our parents. These babies right here, these babies don't know nothing right now. Everything they learning, they learning from watching us. They learning from watching things, from hearing things, from experiencing different things. They pick things up. They taste the things. These senses that we have, your eyesight, your hearing, your smell, your touch, all these things, you don't necessarily see them, but you feel them. And they there. And, it's, and Yahweh created all these things. He made all these animals. He made, he gave us the breath of life. But how do we know that he here? How do we know he real? How do you know? I just know. I feel it. I feel it. This book was given to me, and it's, and it's basically called Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. But it was, I say go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. Verse 24, and it's saying, Elohim said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beasts of the earth after his kind, 
and it was so. And Elohim made the beasts of the earth also after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. When you look into the mirror, you're looking at the image of Elohim. Elohim made you in his own image. Now, some people don't agree, but it's something I've always agreed. In Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Honor your mother and your father. Why? Because they are the ones that created you. Yahweh created Adam. Then Yahweh created the woman that Adam called Eve. The next child that came into this earth was Cain and Abel. How did they get here? Adam knew his wife, Eve. And when Adam knew his wife, Eve, and they bear a child, thus how the man continuation in the earth begins. That's why you have your mother and your father that you must always honor. He said, let every man fear his mother and his father. Your mother and your father is your creator. They did create you. Yahweh gave them the power. He put power in man and in woman to be able to bring forth a seed. Just like every single thing on this earth, the man carries the seed of himself. Just like the tree, the fruit tree, it carries seed of itself. Just like every beast of the field, it carries seed of itself. And of yourself, you teach and raise your children in the way they should go. And yes, you're going to have questions. And yes, you're going to wonder about things that we cannot see and things that can't be explained. But I can tell you, in life, there are going to be a lot of things that you ain't going to be able to explain. There's going to be a lot of things that God bless you to live long enough to see with your eyes. There's going to be a lot of things that you're not going to be able to explain. And there's no way to explain it. Because by every scientific fact, this should not have happened according to their scientific fact, but it happened. According to their scientific fact, it shouldn't have taken place. But it did take place. So, you know, I can only say believing and knowing, believing and knowing, you have to believe in what your, what your, what your, what your family gives you, what your mom and your pops give you. Believe in the things that you experience in life. The good and the bad. Because they, they, those little things are going to shape and mold. Those things are going to guide you. Those things are going to show you. They're going to show you truth. And they're going to show you. They're going to show you wrong. But it's all going to be on you to decipher it. It's, yeah. How do you. As a child, you say, believe. How do you get them? How do I believe? You believe come by what you're being taught over over time. For you are you the parent 
will teach this child on how they do on anything that they anything that you can anything that you can be that you apply yourself to and that you do on a continuous manner you begin to believe in that thing so when you when i'm teaching i taught my son on how to ride a bike they didn't believe they can do it they didn't think they can ride a bike but if you get on the bike and you, you you start learning how to ride first sometimes you put training wheels on the bike and the training wheels they set firm on the ground so you can ride you can left right and the bike don't move it don't teeter tire it don't go nowhere but then if i lift one of the training wheels up off the ground just a little bit so that it falls to the left it falls to the right now you got to learn how to balance yourself on that bike and the more you continue to learn how to balance yourself, soon it comes apparent that you don't fall. You stay balanced. So over, over time, as I continue to show you these things and you accomplish these little goals, then you begin to believe in them. So I'm trying to see where it gets connected. Because if I, okay, say, you know, for instance, this child, okay, they come to every Sabbath, they hear every new moon, they do all the feast days. But for whatever reason, there's still okay. the belief. There's still well, here's the thing. It's just like when we go to school. If I go to school every single day, right, and the teacher give a lesson every day, and I'm just in class, and then when the test time comes for me to take the test, I get a couple answers right, but I don't pass the test. Why didn't I pass the test? I was in class every day. I was sitting there. I was listening. I was on time. I wasn't taking no notes, though. You know, I was in my own world. I was asleep. So when she was telling me to put down one plus one is two, and when she was showing me the, the breakdown of it, and when she was explaining it to me, and I wasn't taking down no note, and I wasn't really following along because I was asleep. No, I wasn't really getting the entire lesson. So when it came time for test time, I didn't have the answers. So when I'm coming to Sabbath class and we're going over the Ten Commandments and, and, and it's being broken down to me, but I'm I'm just sitting in class and I'm just listening. I'm not right, I'm not getting involved, is what I'm saying. If I'm not involving myself in the lesson. If I'm not participating in the lesson, then how can I get it? How can I learn it? How can I then begin to believe in it? It's like if the stove is hot and that baby go touch, I tell that baby, it's, it's hot. I say, it's hot. It's hot. Don't touch it. But the baby touched the stove anyway. Ah! Guess what the baby just learned? Not to touch that stove because the baby know when he hear hot, now I say hot, that baby assert that pain to that heat. And now that baby say hot, that's hot. That's hot. The baby like, that's hot. Every time the baby sees some see something with heat, that's hot. That's hot. Because now the baby believe now. Not only believe, but the baby know. They don't just believe it's hot. Because see, when I just believed it was hot, I still touched it. You know what I'm saying? But now that I know it's hot, I ain't touching it. Because I know it's hot. Right. See, I don't want to believe in this. I know this is the way to live. See, where is it? It's, um, it's, um, it's a, like this here. I can't call the scripture to my mind right at this moment. But let's say I tell you don't steal. All right? I say don't steal. You don't never take nothing that don't belong to you. That's not yours. That's a wrong thing to do, stealing. You don't steal. But then you say, I know he told me not to steal. I know my mama said don't steal. I know my daddy told me not to steal. But I really, really want that candy bar. You know, oh, I really, really like them shoes. Or you know what? That gold chain, whatever, it would look real good to me. Hey, ain't nobody even over there buying it. 
It's sitting there all by itself. Oh, you know what? I can have that. I think I'm gonna get it. And then you go over there. See, the wicked don't know. He's being wicked, but you go over there to take that candy bar. You took the candy bar, but you didn't know they was watching. Now you're going to jail. Or you didn't know something worse could have happened. It could have been a trap. Like so many people said, traps for animals. You pulled the you took the candy bar, but then a gunshot went off. Oh, it may not even be that extreme. You know, it might be a sign that says danger. Ice melted. But you don't pay attention to the ice melting on the lake. So you walk on the lake anyway because you don't believe that the ice is going to break. Even though the sign says this is going to break. You don't pay attention because you don't believe until you walk out there on that ice and you fall through. Now you believe. But, but it's too late. It's too late now. Now you're fighting for your life. Because you didn't want to take heed to instructions that was given to you. See, as parents, we instruct children on the way they should go so that they don't have to go through pains and heartaches in life. But they won't believe or they won't know it until they go through it. Like we was growing up, it was a lot of things that we was told growing up that we did not believe until we became parents. Because there's a lot of things as children you're not going to believe and you're not going to understand until you become an adult. Until you out here paying bills on your own. Until you become a mama. And you got to raise another life. Now you understand what's being said when I say don't talk to that boy. Leave that boy alone. Get your behind in the house. Go sit down somewhere. Quit running your mouth so much. Now you understand what that means because you got a life you're responsible for. Because you got to raise somebody else. And guess what you got to do when you're raising them? You got to teach them the things they need to know to live in this life. You got to teach them. You got to raise them up and knowing what these commandments is telling us. It's not a good thing to treat people bad that don't treat you right, that don't do bad to you. Mercy is a beautiful thing. Don't be so quick to run and shed innocent blood. See, these are instructions that's in this book that people call the Bible. These are instructions that help us learn how to live in this life. And that's something that you can see. For me, that people can see it, why don't they, why, why, why is this going to disconnect? Because, they, well, you know, they, Yahweh told us, he told us, when we sit by the way, when we lying down, when we walking by the way, we ought to use those times to instruct and to teach our children. Those are teachable moments. When you walk about, I mean, this man is homeless. But why is he homeless? Some people are out there homeless because that's just what they want to do. They don't want no responsibility. And they'll tell you that. There ain't no shame in their game. They tell you, I'm, I don't want the responsibility. I got tired of paying bills. I got tired of doing this. I ain't doing it no more. Take care of me. And they'll be happy to tell you that. There's some people out there, you know what? They really are suffering from a mental illness and they just couldn't get the help that they needed. And, and that's why they out there on the streets. And they got a mental illness and you know who they is when you see them. Because they ain't like all the other homeless people outside. You can tell the difference. But then you got some that's out there, they just fell on hard times. Trust me when I tell you, they just fell on hard times. And they only there for a moment because they putting their plan together. They working themselves through it. You know what I'm saying? They only there for a moment, but they homeless. But they in that situation for a reason. See? And the reason is 
Some of us just didn't believe. Some of us thought I could pay my bills when I get ready to pay my bills. Some of us thought I ain't I can leave this job and I'm gonna get another job. But see, what they didn't count on was leaving that job and then COVID hit. Yeah. Now it's a wake up call. Now they homeless. Cause they ain't got no money. They ain't got see. A lot of things you're not going to believe. You're not going to believe it until it happened, until something happened to you to make you want to believe, to make you want to know. You stand down the barrel of a 45, you stand down the barrel of a 38, I pray that y'all, that some of you never ever had the experience, and I pray that y'all, you never had the experience, a man standing in front of you holding a gun in your face. And you can't even see past that man. Because the only thing you focus on is that damn on barrel. I'm telling you what I know. It's a scary thing. And I pray you don't have to experience or you never experience it again. But the thing about it is, see, you may not just didn't want to believe when they was telling you, don't go down that way. They over there don't they, don't, they they live a different life over that way. You know what I mean? They real scandalous over that way. You know, or if you go that way, you got to walk like this. You know what I'm saying? When you go that way, you got to look people in their face. And you let them know that you ain't nobody to play with when you walk in that way. See, there's certain things you got to learn in this life that you may not have learned just yet. But you will learn them. Let's see. We got instructions. These are instructions that Yahweh is giving us for us to return back to him. For us to live the life that we need to live. Because I don't know how to really make you believe something that you don't want to believe. I can't make you believe in nothing. All I can do is be an example and show you. Like, hey, my life is going this way because I live like this. I go according to this. And if you take a little taste of this life and see what it can do for you in your life, and then maybe you'll start believing on what's being said. If you apply, that's why he say, apply this to your life. These Ten Commandments, he doesn't, don't, don't, don't just live it. Don't just talk about it. Don't just, they're just going to be talking about the Ten Commandments. Uh, don't commit adultery. Don't steal. You know, don't be disrespectful to your neighbors. You know, all those things play a part in our life. Being neighborly, being kind, being merciful. Those things play a part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I know more Ray is getting ready to come up. I'm getting ready to get down from up here. I truly do appreciate y'all taking a little bit of time to hear, hear the words. But Believing and knowing is two different things. And a lot of times you won't believe or you won't believe in something until you know. And you won't know it until you don't walk in it and live it. So all you can do right now, really, is trust. Trust in what your parents tell you. Believe in them. Believe in them. Believe in what they're showing you. And if you do that, you're halfway there. You halfway there because the rest of it is going to come in that season. It's going to come in the time for you to learn it. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the most high, y'all. And without any further ado, put your hands together as we bring him up. More Aaron. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yahweh. Yah he is righteous. All the time. All the time. Be seated, please. Giving all honor, all praise, all glory. Thanks to the Holy One of Israel, whose name alone is Yah. By saying hallelujah. hallelujah. Truly Yah is righteous all the time. Give him thanks for this day, which he has allowed us to see, to be in the land of the living. We will praise and glorify and honor him. So we give him thanks to him and him only. Shabbat shalom to all within the Congregation of Halls, peace and blessing of Yahweh with you. Glad to see you in sound body, spirit, and mind. Shabbat shalom to all listening by way of all social media. Shabbat shalom unto you. We are glad the Almighty has been most gracious unto you. And this day finds you hopefully, prayerfully, in good sound body mind and spirit hallelujah we do give him thanks for life for life can be can be fleeting yes sir And people are in a fragile state nowadays. That's why you hear me always thank the Almighty for good health, mind, body, and spirit. Because the state of the world is in peril. Particular song that David Penn asks us to number our days, teaches how to number our days. Then he makes reference that if we are blessed to see three score and sixty. Blessed, and if by reason of strength we can attain four score, then that's the mercy, great mercy of the Almighty God. So every day, no matter what come, what may, we have to learn to give thanks to the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't guess I have to ask. Are there any questions? Before I go any further, go and do that. Give my brother another hand, please. Admirable. Admirable, y'all. And I too just want to speak to something that I would pray people might consider and hear. Fan or no fan, agree or disagree. Scripture show the two individuals, scripture show the righteous. That one's demise or one's death is not something that needs to be championed. Whatever they said, whatever they did, it's written. We mourn that even if they were wicked, we mourn that they never took the time or 
found the time or had the time granted to him to return to the Almighty. So I say that because, as my brother said, if a young man, young man, did succumb and pass on, and as I said, I didn't listen much. I knew of things that were said. I didn't listen much. And what was said, a lot of it I disagreed with. Or maybe it was just the approach, but that was nevertheless, and I but I found it somewhat deplorable. And of course, this is, everybody had a right to do whatever they want to do, but I found it deplorable the way some people got on social media and lambasted and downtrodden and talk and the manner in which they talked about this person. There's a movie, y'all know about me and my movies. And the man is on trial. And it's a trial about a young man that's murdered. But the young man was in the service, and his record in the service come up. And he says, and the lawyer said, Well, he wrote all these bad reports about him. He said, and the guy on that he's questioning, he said, Yeah, he said, he was all right, so. He said, that's not what your report say. He said, well, I said he was all right, so because I see no need on trampling on the grave of a dead man. So I see no need to sit here and tell you every single thing he did wrong and what I thought was wrong with him, and he's dead. In other words, there's a level of respect that one can show. And we can learn that, and scripturally, we learn that even from King David. I was talking and we were reading earlier today with me and the brother and we read there's two incidences where me and thought with David they were doing him a great favor. First incident was Saul. And the messenger came back and said, Do you know that I I killed Saul on the battlefield? Preparing a way for you to become king. David said to the messenger, he said, and you think you're bringing me good news? He said, that's not good news that you stretched out your hand against one of y'all's anointed, especially. But it's not good news that you bring me the word of this man, Demise. And he said, therefore, he turned to his servant, he said, kill this man. And they fell upon him. But not only did he do that with Saul, Saul had a son. While David reigned in Hebron, Saul had a son named Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth took his father's throne after his death. And Ishbosheth, of course, there's feuding between the house of David and the house of Saul. And Ishbosheth is reigning. And two young men that are loyal to David, that's loyal to David. So let's not get, they're loyal to David. They conceive and conspire and they go and they murder and assassinate Ishbosheth. And they come back to David with Ishbosheth reported his, his death. And David said, Y'all didn't learn nothing. He said, A man came to me thinking to tell me that the death of Saul was a good thing and I would reward him. He said, And y'all come here doing the same thing. He said, Number one, I don't need you to take care of of Ishbosheth because the Almighty already has. I left him in the hands of the Creator. And the Creator has. Because this is going to also go to the question that's on the floor. He said, so therefore, I didn't need y'all to do that. And the fact that you thought coming back here and bringing me the news of his death of a man that did nothing to you and very little to me that's not a righteous thing. And therefore, he told his young men again, fall on both of them and kill them as well. So, 
And one of the foreign kings, the last example I use is one of the foreign kings died, and David sent emissaries to give his condolences. Now, they took it the wrong way, but David sent emissaries to give his condolences. He didn't start clapping his hands and jumping up and down and saying, yeah, I'm glad he a rotten old scoundrel king and you know, a wicked. He, he sent condolences because there is a level of decorum. There's a level of respect. There's a level in which one righteously should conduct himself. I was enraged in a sense when Maria and Lisa passed away because I got a chance to walk around a little bit and I heard people on the phone talking about me. My inclination was, well, what are you doing here? And that's the only way my inclination could be because the other part of me would have got something real ugly started. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, just, then don't say nothing right. and stay away from me. Mm -hmm. Be mute. So I would hope our people would get back to know how to even have some respect. And I know he said a lot of inflammatory things, this young man, to some. But hey, that's that. And as the song say, it's over now. But he still have some people that care for him and can still be shown some respect. Because <clears throat> I hate to see us do what we do sometimes in front of the world. And that's act ugly. <laughs> Question on the floor. On it, I hear uh, and I heard as I sat in is the belief in Yah. Is there anything that won't be added to it right about now? Or was everything spoken and asked the first and and asked previously? Or? I'll the word I understand I heard it in parts. Uh, so the, it was uh, an ad that was added to it. Well, I guess that is the kind of the same thing. Um, when talking to the you, um, the question was, how can I believe in something that's not fair? And um, and so I need an understanding on how to. Uh, I guess we just want to pour some wisdom and understanding on how to approach the situation without being. Uh, I want to attack. Youth, yes. you know, they, they don't think foolishly. We, we, we in our, our day age, and we still, you know, some of us struggle to think a certain way or whatever. And so I don't, I want to approach it um, with wisdom to where there's understanding um, on both parts, to where I'm understanding of whatever the need is that they're missing, and so that they under they get that need that, uh, and so that they have wisdom and understanding. And, you know, can see um, what I see and why I am so strong into um, the most high as I am. But as I listen to Brother Hayekai, um, a lot of action was put forth, you know, because I went through many trials, that is what strengthened my belief, knowing that my ways, nobody could reach me right. until I came to this way of life, and then I was able, I was reached, you know. Um, and so I guess for me, I don't, I'll be most I will, but, you know, being that this is a use, I would, you know, I know most I have this journey. We all have one. We got to go through, we got to go through our, our, our trials, our, our errors. We have to learn, you know, but we also have choices. The scriptures say that. You can choose life and live, you know, and, and, if by chance I can reach the youth and help them, you know, to believe if it's the most high will, you know, I would like to take that route 
to keep him from as much as that journey that I went down that wasn't the best journey, you know, uh, from learning the hard way. Um, so, like, it's just strengthening your belief in the most high. And, you know, because you can come even uh, as a boss, you can come every single day, come every Saturday, come to every feast day, every no more, and it, it just might not be in your heart. You know, and so uh, I'm just trying to get that disconnect so I can reconnect, give them a little uh, shock, boom, you know, and shock them back to life and, you know, get them back on the on the right path. You know, it would be the most high good because uh, it shows me that maybe I'll kind of, and I kind of, I kind of know that I kind of was a little limited anyway, but now it shows me like, okay, homie, you really got to, up, up your game, you know, because apparently, you know, the way that you're doing things is not, I'm, I'm messing up. And so uh, I just, most of my brother, I know he always helped me out and then I stray again, but I need to stay on the path. I need him to shock me so I can keep shocking the you. <laughs> so, I can, so I can, you know, continue to number my days. As, as, as I'll politely say, this journey that I'm on. I believe. Hallelujah. Any other questions that go along with that? Or questions on the floor that anybody wants to put forth or from the internet? Well, that's good. A mouthful was said, and my brother did an admirable job and set us on the right track. And the Almighty, the Creator. addresses it yes, sir. and i like what you said when you said the youth and talk about the youth but i even like more what you said when you said and some of us adults mm -hmm. even some of us that come to classes and I've been there for 10, 20 years, sit in classes. When it comes to their belief, it's funny. Belief in with the let's so let's get to it. Belief. I've Four beautiful children. So I kind of want to put you at ease for a minute. There is no stepping up. There is no stepping up of your game that you can do to make the youth believe in the Almighty. Much talk as you can talk. As much things as you can do, that won't make them believe in the Almighty. So I can put you at ease right there. <laughs> and that's the truth. You you want the truth, don't you? Yeah. Huh? Because that's what we give. So there, there's nothing, there's nothing when you come in into belief and getting into the realm of belief, there's nothing that I can do to make my son believe. Except tell him. That's why I always do. I tell them things. I don't put things on them. I tell them things. Now, when they think they know more than me, I say, we're going to see. And I, after I tell them, guess what they do then? They find out. And they find out in their own way. Then they come back and say, well, uh, Daddy, 
uh, you was right. I said, I know. <laughs> and more than likely, I'll be right the next time that you think I'm not right. Now, I don't say that out of arrogance. Right. I say that because that's the same path that I went down to teach. And Brother Haikai was, was laying it out to teach. But some of them, that's the thing about parenting and parents. And that's because we are parents. Yeah. But and you're not a bad parent once the child get to where they can do their thing because this is what they gonna have to experience as he referenced the proverbs train a child in the way that they should go. See, once I've trained you, I brought them to Sabbath class, I've showed them how I conduct myself. I show them the things I do. I've set you on the path. Now, if some years later, you don't stay on that path, I can't really say I was a bad parent. Or I didn't show them this. No, now they have their own ability to walk in the manner in which they walk. And their relationship with the Almighty, because belief is part of your relationship. It's a part of the relationship. And the relationship with the Almighty is something each and every person has to forge for themselves. That's why the scriptures say, if you be wise, you'll be wise for everybody around you. No, that ain't what it says. The scriptures say, if you be wise, you're going to be wise for yourself. Because in the end of everything, that's the only control you have over anything is yourself. Being the best example, the best teacher, woman, but in the end, the only one that really you have control over, the only sphere that you have control over is yourself. And that's why the Almighty, let's look at a few things. When it, so when it comes to the Almighty, how can you make somebody believe in it? You can't. But that's why the Creator says in the book of Isaiah, that's why you'll see some people do things that take take this a little more serious or be in another avenue or another lane then you see other people and that's because they believe that's because their relationship and that's why the almighty spoke to israel isaiah hallelujah verse 1 43 chapter 43 verse 1 let's start there hallelujah Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now thus saith Yahweh, but now thus saith Yahweh that created thee, O Yahweh, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Now, this is belief. This is belief. Huh? Fear, these instructions, but this is based in belief. This is steeped in belief. Fear not. Fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters. That, that's a belief. When you pass through the water, when you, what, what's passing through the water? Does he mean go to the water and go on swimming? No. Waters indicated like flood waters. When waters surround you. And they get too deep. 
and you get the sense that you're going to drown. The Almighty said, no, you won't drown. I'm with you. Do you have assurance of that? Do you have assurance of that? No. So what you have? You have belief. But he said, what? I'm with you. Say, I will be with thee. And through the, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And all these things are indicative of what? Believe. Believe. Oh, yeah. But all these things, yes, but all these things are indicative of what? Trial. Trial. Yeah. Trouble. Yeah. Trouble. Yeah. Trouble. Hardships. Because no man, scripture say, man born of woman is born in the trouble. Nobody have ever been promised, not even by the Almighty, of a life that don't have trouble. Some people are just as good say from the from the womb they born into trouble. We looked at what was that show we looked at? We looked at the show. We looked at a show of a young lady. Yes, a couple weeks ago. We looked at a show of a young lady when she was born. She was born and she could fit in the palm of her father's hand. She was one pound. They 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 show she could fit right in the palm of his hand. He, they show the picture. He, he holding her right in the palm of his hand. And they told her, they told them, don't get too attached. Yes. Well, they tell them don't get too attached because man, look at look at what you holding. And my brother said earlier. Oz, the odds are we're telling you with our science and everything we're telling you don't get attached because we're telling you probably in a few short span of time you're going to have to get you're going to have to give her up so don't even get too attached so it won't hurt so much but only to know that she's what a teenager Still here, huh? Still going, big, strong, huh? From one pound. So she literally is personified what scripture say when it says, Man born of a woman is born into church. She literally, and so many other babies literally personify that scripture. So that's why the Almighty says, fear not. Now, who from one pound, from one pound to a adolescent teen, who has done that for? Because let me tell you, doctors didn't, because the doctor's the one that said, give up on that. The mother and father didn't, because they touch and go listening to the dog, so they don't know. Ooh, probably she's not gonna make it. And if you put it in front of everybody, honestly, just walking on two feet, they gonna say she don't stand a chance. But the creator, the creator of heaven, earth, and sea, and all that in them is. He gave her a chance. He gave her a chance. Because life and death is in the hands of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Stable singer said, if you're going to believe in something, Cornish said, if you're going to believe in something, yeah. <laughs> why not believe in me? Huh? Because you're going to believe in something. Even if you don't believe, watch this. Even if you don't believe in nothing, you believe in something. So we're going to believe in something. 
Why not believe in the creator? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to show how powerful belief is to the Almighty. But he said, when you pass through the waters, and you're going to have to have belief. Because like I said, and my brother said earlier, see, some things ain't going to be tangible. Some things not going to be tangible. Some things you can't lay a hand on and say, this is proof positive. Right. Have to believe. Go ahead. When I pass into, for I, verse 3, for I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, mm -hmm. the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. thou Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, Will I give men for thee and people for thy life? Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, but I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him bring forth the blind people that have eyes. So then you know you ain't talking about physically blind. You don't want you to bring forth going out there and grab people that have lost their sight. That's not what he's talking about. That's why he said, bring forth the blind. That have ah, they blinded spiritually. They blinded to spiritual matters. Bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together mm -hmm. and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Because there it is. Belief is the pathway to truth. It's the starting point. Belief, believe it or not, huh? no pun intended, but belief, believe it or not, belief is like a seed. You have to plant the seed. Yes. Yes, sir. And that's what belief is. Belief yes, is a seed. Yes, sir. It's not the plant. It's not the vine. Yes, sir. But belief is the seed. The truth is the vine. The truth is when that seed had broken through and grew up and branches out and puts forth good fruit. So the truth is the vine or the plant or the flower, but belief is the seed. And that's why the Almighty says, knowing it's the seed, that's why the Almighty says in verse 10, Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, mm -hmm. and my servant, mm -hmm. whom I have chosen. Now watch what he want from his witnesses, that from his servants, and let me, like I said, truthfully, see, that means everybody is not his witness, his servant. They won't achieve this. They won't achieve. Everybody won't achieve being his chosen. Because he said, ye are my witnesses, say, y'all, my servant whom I have chosen. And what does he want his servant to have and know? That Those, ye may know. That ye may what? Know. Know. And believe and me. And believe me. And understand. And even though written in reverse order, it's belief first. Yes, sir. 
is knowing and believing. Well, it ain't written in verse 4. Because Father, Father Yah first made himself known to Father Abraham. Then once he made himself known to Father Abraham, it said Father Abraham, and we're about to read it. Because then it said Father Abraham after he knew Yah. Then he said, and he believed him. No proof. Hallelujah. No proof. None is showing. But it said he simply knew him and then whatever y'all said, he believed it. And it was counted to him for righteousness. But now the Almighty hid and still one more thing though. For he says, I want you to know. Then I want you to believe. And believe me, and what? Understand. So we need the three components. We need knowledge. We need knowledge. Knowledge will further our belief and our growth and our belief. That's what knowledge will do. And what we need to help further and get more knowledge is we need to understand. That's why the Almighty is not afraid that he's questioned. He's not afraid that there's reservations. And that's why I love the book and the prophet Isaiah because the Almighty, that's what he deals with in Isaiah, is mankind's reservation. That's why he tells him, well, bring forth some other witnesses. Bring forth your other witness. Who, is, who have declared to be the end from the beginning? As I have. Who have given you signs and wonders? As I have. Because I want you to know. And then I want you to understand. That's what I want my servant to do. Very good. So he says again, verse 10, and we will get with that. Ye are my witnesses, said Yahweh, mm -hmm. and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me. There was no Elohim form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh, and besides me, there is no Savior. I have declared and have and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange Elohim among you. So as a as a Believers, see, to know and believe. Now, I give you my testimony. When brother first came to me, gave me the wisdom of the Almighty. I said, I believe this to be, I believe what the brother's saying sounds good. It sounds good. But I got to know if it's good. And that's why the Almighty, I'm going to stay here with this scripture for a minute. It says, believe and know me. Knowledge. Because we can believe in many things. We believe. See, don't take this verse too short. Know, believe, understand. Because I believed for a long time. I believed what my parents gave me as far as Christianity. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I believe. Yes, sir. I believed it. 
I believe it. But why wouldn't it be right? That's that's mother and father. Why wouldn't it be right? That's right. You know, hey, gotta be right. And my brother was saying, father to the son, father to this should be it should be taught. You're taught. So I believed it was right. Yeah. I didn't know it was right. See, now that's the difference with the Almighty. Yes. Oh, my God. children can believe that it's right, but then the Almighty said, I want you to know that it's right. Because the Creator says something, and this is why I said, it's nothing that you can do to up the ante. This is something they have to do because right. if you turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 25th chapter chapter 25 hallelujah verse 1 through 4 Proverbs chapter 25 verse 1 these are also Proverbs of Solomon which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied out now watch verse 2. It is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing. What does he do? Conceal. What does he do? Conceal. He, he concealed things. He hides it. He hides it. Yeah. And he said, that's my glory. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. That's my glory. As Elohim, as Yah Elohim, as a creator, that's my glory to hide matters. That's why I say when people say, well, how can you believe in something you can't see? Well, he's hidden. And that's, his, that's part of his glory. Yes, but watch this next verse. But, but the honor is honor and honorable of king. Of who? King. Of who? King. Kings to do what? To search out a matter. So I'm going to search him out. Hallelujah. They telling me about this great king. They telling me about this invisible power. They telling me why I should fear him. They telling me I'm going to search him out. So when the brother came and told me about the Almighty, that's exactly what I did. Yes, sir. And that's why I said for a long season, the Almighty was gracious unto me, and I didn't have to worry. I understand this all part of my testimony. For a long season, I sat back and didn't have to work. I got laid off and had a little sum of money and. I had to live, and I just went to the library. I've told y'all this before. I was so known the security guard knew me. The librarian on third floor knew me. I had my own table. Because when I got when I went to the Y and got done playing ball, I went across the street to the downtown public library. And I just would take books off the shelf and just go to that table and just throw the books down. And I read every and anything that could come into my head. First, trying to disprove the brother. I said, because that brother lying. Stuff he's saying, I ain't heard before. Oh, and they, they, but he lying. And I'm going to get me something. I'm going to get me something to show that he lying. And everything that I started reading, and then I would go to scripture, and I read, and I go to scripture, and I said, wait a minute. Hold it. This is very fun. Wait a minute. Hold it. What I'm saying is as I search the matter out, the Almighty is not intimidated, but that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. And that's what kings do. And then look at what he says in verse 3. Search it, search it out. The heavens for height. Search the heavens in height. And for his height. For death. Search it. Look into the huh, study. It. That's why we were a mighty people. Because with the Almighty on our side, and again, as I always say, trying to obtain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Solomon, whom Hezekiah is copying the Proverbs from, what did Solomon do? He studied everything around him. He studied the heavens. What's the wisdom of the heavens? 
Because hmm? my father David told me, Yah reigns in the heavens. My father David told me this about the heavens and that about the heavens. Well, let me see. And he searched the matter out. So he searched out the height of the heavens. The earth was the depth. He searched in the depths of the earth as far as he could go. He searched in the depths of the earth. When my father told me that Yah reigns in the depths of the earth. Let me see. Let me search it out. And the what? And the heart of kings. And I also is unsearchable. It's unsearchable. But I also search out the way people are. Because my father told me that Yah is creator over all men. So I searched out the way people are. And I come to find out that everything about the creator. When I search it out, it's spot on. It's spot on. His wisdom is great and infallible. And the more I search out what he has hidden, the more I increase in my knowledge, the more I believe upon him. I have no other choice. But with the basis of belief, it makes me want to go and search out if it's right. If it's wrong, that's what belief is. That's why I said it's the seed. It's the seed. And now part of it is for one to go and search it out. It's not enough just to have belief. But go and search the belief out. And then verse four, look what he concludes. He says, What? Take away the droves for doing this. From the silver. For when you search out the Almighty, you take away the dross. From the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer, and the refiner shall have material for his vessel. See, the dross got to be taken off. For a lot of people, the dross ain't taken off. The dross is on them, so they won't search the Almighty out. I've never seen a man that have a relationship with the Creator, and he haven't had to search him out. Abraham had to search him out, even though he was known, even though he come to believe in him. The dross had to be taken off of him. Moses, he had to search y'all out. David, he had to search y'all out. All the Daniel, he had to search y'all out. All the men that truly have a relationship with the Creator, they had to search him out. Because the Almighty said, I want you to believe, I want you to know, and part of it is I want you to understand. And some people. Don't put the whole picture together. They have a part of the picture. But the picture is distorted. So the creator says, I want you to know, believe, and understand. And when you know and believe and understand, then you have a relationship. And that comes with you and the creator. And my brother was saying, and how is that often in searching it out? It's like anything else. When you search it out, what's going to happen? There's going to be what? Trial and error. Look at Psalm 119. Do we have a belief? And I believe the Almighty is in everything. Hey, Psalms 119. See, that's the first thing. That's my belief. Just as he stated. I believe he in everything. 
So I don't need to see a physical manifestation of him because I see him in everything. Hallelujah. See, people waiting to see him. And you see him every day. I see him in the trees. I see him in the sky. We always say this. And guess what? I'm looking at him right now. Now somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say mm -hmm. Tell me how I'm looking at him then. There you go, y'all. Show up now. Because you made in his image. And after his likeness. And that's why he put that there. So why won't you see him? And that's the mindset people should have today. Especially his children. That's the mindset they should have today. And with that mind state and that understanding and that belief, then maybe we would treat each other in a better way than what we treat each other. Again, going back to the days me and probably Brother Hakeem, maybe Brother Zachariah can establish. Like we said, we used to walk around and say, peace, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still say it. Still say it. Still say it. Yeah, that's what we said. Peace, God. And it wasn't when we said it, it wasn't like we were like, ooh, let me bow down to him. It was a movement. It was a consciousness we started getting that we were saying, hey, you you, you made it like God. You made the image of God. Peace, God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Peace, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new consciousness. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find the Almighty. Did I say go to the song? Yes, sir. The whole song. Because if you're trying to find the Almighty... And I think we done taught on this before. But it don't mean we can't teach on it again. Go to the book. I think I want Second Kings. I think that's where I want. Let me, let me make sure. First Kings, 19. First Kings, chapter 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start the 11th verse, my brother. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before you. Hallelujah. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before Yahweh. And behold, Yahweh passed by, and the great and strong wind rent the mountain mm -hmm, great. and break in pieces the rocks. Great and strong wind. Before Yahweh. Rent the mountain, tore them in two. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh was not in the wind. And, and what? Yahweh was not in the wind. But was Yah there? He was there. He was not there. Not in the wind. That, that great strong wind that tore up mountains and rent them in pieces, surely the Almighty should be there. That's him. That's what most people say because it's tangible. It's big. It's flashy. 
That's got to be him. But he said he wasn't there. Go ahead. And after the wind and earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. Was he in the earthquake? No. Wasn't in the earthquake. Hmm? And after the earthquake, a fire. But Yahweh was not in the fire. Three great catastrophes and calamities. Huh? That we surely people can say, yeah, that's 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 Yahweh. People still do it today. That's the Lord. Even though they don't know that, that's the Lord. And yes, it is in the sense that there's nothing that happens in this in its existence that he don't know about. But that don't mean that that's him trying to get our attention. Because he get our attention in this manner. And after the earthquake. After the three catastrophes and calamities. A fire, but Yahweh was not in the fire. Mm -hmm. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Your conscious. The inner peace. The inner man. See, people, that's why when great things happen, then us, oh, I'll make a change. Mm -hmm. Car accident, bam, they get, oh, I, I found y'all now. And I made, oh, let me go to class. Oh, I'll make a change. Mm -hmm. yeah. House burned down, and they got, oh, let me go. Uh, uh, I found y'all. Let me go. I, I, I'm going to serve him. Great catastrophes and calamities. And they look to the other and say, the Almighty. And sure he was, like I said, because he's everywhere all the time. He's omnipresent. Yes, he is. Huh? Mm -hmm. But do we give him the same reverence, the same understanding to know that in the stillness of things, when there is no calamity, when there's nothing great happening, when it's you and your consciousness and the Almighty is speaking to you in that small, still voice instructing you, but we won't heed it because that's where he was at. That's where he could be found. He could be found where? Small, still voice. He could be found in a small, still voice. And Elijah knew that. That's why when that small, still voice spoke to him, what did Elijah do? And it was so when Elijah heard it. When he heard it. That he wrapped his face in his mantle. He wrapped his face in his mantle. And went out. And went out. And stood in the entering end of the cave. He didn't do it when the earthquake happened. That didn't make him come out of the cave. He didn't do it with the fire. That didn't make him come out of cave. He didn't do it with the wind. That didn't make him come out of cave. When he knew the Almighty was talking to him and speaking to him is when he heard what? That small, still voice. And behold, he came out of the cave. And there came a voice unto him and said, what doesn't thou hear, Elijah? And that was the voice of the Most High Yah. So when the Almighty come to us in a small time, that's what a lot of people don't hearken to. But that's when he's speaking to you. As the scriptures say, when I commune upon my bed and the Almighty come to me, when it's quiet, when it's still, not when it's chaotic. I look for the creator in peace. Oh, yeah. peace. So he can give me understanding in the peace. Right. So I can know him in the peace, not in the chaos. Oh, yeah. And not only in the peace, I look for the creator within and why when people say i have a relationship with him and i say well that's all right i'm sure you do but it can be a good relationship or a bad relationship like any other relationship 
Because yeah. you have a relationship with him, but in the relationship, you don't do the things that he instructs you to do. Or you don't desire the things that he desires. Mm -hmm. Then that's a bad relationship. And it's not a bad relationship on his part. It's a bad relationship on your part. So you can say, I don't need to go to Sabbath class because I have a relationship with him. Well, that's not a good relationship. That's, that's contrary to it. Relationship, nevertheless. But it's contrary. Because a good relationship is going to do the necessary things that the Almighty wants you to do. And that's why the Creator says, see, you don't have to go very far to know y'all. That's why it says in the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. The people do question it. Well, how do I know to believe in it? Well, look to yourself. Thirty chapter, verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 30. <laughs> If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. If you should do what? Keep so his commandments and his statutes. Now listen. Harkin, that's right. Harkin unto, Harkin unto yes. what? If thou shalt hearken unto the voice well, of Yahweh. I've never heard him. Yes, you did. I hear him every Sabbath day. I hear him every time I read this book. I pick it up and say, thus says Yah. I'm hearing the voice of Yah. And if I shall hearken unto it, to keep his commandments and statutes which are written in this book of the law, yes, and if thou turn unto Yahweh, thy Elohim, with all thy heart mm -hmm. and with all thy soul, yes. for this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who? She'll go up to heaven for who shall go up for us to heaven. That's why when they come to me and they say, Well, I have Christ and my Lord and Savior because He came and showed me how to worship Yah. I said, Nobody needs to come and show you that. The worship Yah is as simple as to do what He requires of you to do. He didn't make that very hard at all. He said, If you will hearken unto these commandments. Notice he didn't say, if you will think these commandments are done away with. He said, if you will hearken unto these commandments and turn to Yah. Notice he didn't say, and turn to somebody else, anybody else, or turn to my son. He said, and you will turn to him and give him all your heart and all your soul. If you do that. Huh? And I didn't make that complicated. I made that very simple and very easy. For this command which I commanded it, it's not hidden. It's not a far off. That's why I said people will believe in something. It's ironic. They stop believing in the Almighty and then they go and believe in something that's got all this mystery. And secrecy. And complex. I told my brother earlier. The, the third dimension of the 24th parallel of the 50th construct of the knowledge of Zoom, it came down and lighted upon the head of Asim. What all that got to do with anything? And if you get that, then you got the triple eye of understanding. You like all this madness when it's very simple. Hmm? Chris says, not in heaven that you should say who should go up for us to bring it unto us that we may hear and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say who should go receive for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But this is why you look to yourself 
and don't need to look no further than to yourself when you're trying to find the Almighty. Because he said what? But the word is what? Very nigh. very nigh unto thee. But the word is very nigh unto thee. In thy mouth. It's in where? In thy mouth. It's in your mouth. And in thy heart. It's in your heart. That thou mayest do it. That you mayest do it. See, I have set before See, thee. even a child know when they're doing wrong. Yes, Scripture says even a child is known by his doing. And even the child I heard Brother High got talking about, even the child using that example of the stove. Even the child know. And you ain't he really haven't comprehended words, but they know. Because what a child do when they're getting into something? Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> they they check you. They check you. Yeah. you they're trying to get your pulse. And the more you let them the more you let them venture off, oh, this is what he's going to let me do. I don't feel comfortable doing it, but this is what he's going to let me do. And why is he checking with you? Because innately, in his spirit, his natural spirit, he knows that something is not what? It's not right. So he got to make sure. So he got to fill out if it's okay or if it's not okay. And he's going to get that indicator by how you react to him. But his natural inclination, his natural spirit is letting him know something ain't right. Because they do that. Now, when they don't feel or sense that something is not right or it's okay, like just being free, then that's what they do. And they don't check with nobody. They don't look to see if anybody's going to say anything to them. They just do it and they're free. That's because innately it's in them. People that do things. Blessed be y'all, because I give them praise and honor for everything. Things could have went horribly wrong. We passed on the way here. We passed a high-speed pursuit. They come the opposite way. And I bless y'all because that could have that could have got ugly at any other time. And I pray that it didn't for nobody else. Because the person was moving. And he had shared cars. He had Evendale chasing him, I think it was, or it may have been heart whip. But he had every, he had cars chasing him. Look like Look like a uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Oh. But why was he running? Because he did something wrong. And you know he's wrong. Same way they say to the young fellas, you so right in shooting somebody. But you running. But you running. If you so right, stay there. Hey, I'm right. He 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 mess. I'm right. I got I'm I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. But you know you're wrong. You know you done did something wrong. You know you done offended against the most high. That's why you're trying to cover it up. Because you know you're wrong. Because divine, divinity, you can't escape it. Even if you don't want to believe in it, you can't escape it. You can't escape the divine. And especially the children of Israel. That's why he said, but the word is very what? Near yeah. unto you. It's in your what? Yeah. Mouth. It's in, in your, your what? Heart. heart. Me and the brother were talking today and we were telephoning. I said, the scripture said that there will be poor among the children of Israel always. But then he said, and there will not, and then there's a scripture that comes and said, but there shall be no poor among the children of Israel. Now somebody without understanding will read that and say, well, this is a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. The poor will be among us. But in a righteous nation, they're not supposed to know they're poor. Because everybody else around them that's not poor is supposed to insulate them to where that that's not even a factor. And they travel, hey, here you go. Here you go. Here you, now they got people handing stuff out to them. And they like, man, I don't even, they tell me I'm poor. But look at all this that I <laughs> that I have. That I don't know I'm poor. 
And so me and the brother were talking because my aunt that I eulogized a couple of months ago now, most of the people that came to her funeral, that's what they touted. That was her fame. When she had a big house when I was young, very young, maybe even before I was born, but she had a big house in the city. And her house was noted for being a turnstile house. I mean, people come in and they go out. But you need a bed to sleep in, you got it. You need the food, you got it. And she put no stipulations on it to the point where it even worked out for her. Hey, you gonna do anything to anybody. We don't care, except that house right there. That house off limits. Because all you gotta do is go to that house and that woman take care of you. Well, that's the spirit. That's why you hear me talk about the spirit. The spirit. That's what the, the book of Daniel said. And they have made war with against the saints of the most high. That's not physically, just physically in your body. That's the spirit. That's the spirit, the natural spirit that they have tried to remove from the children of Israel. That should reside in you. Because it's a natural spirit of the almighty from birth that should be residing within us. From birth, given to us by the Creator. And we wrestle against that natural spirit. We wrestle against that spirit of the Almighty. But if we stop wrestling against it, wrestling against it, you will find the true and living Elohim that you're searching for. That you're seeking. But you can only find it if you stop wrestling against it. As many people do. So belief. What did Father Abraham, what did he say of him? Genesis 15 chapter. Genesis chapter 15. The belief is powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Fifteen chapter. Yes, sir. Verse four. Verse one. Verse one. Hallelujah. So we can understand what he believed. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter fifteen. So we can understand. Belief. Verse one. Yes, sir. After these things. After these things. The word of Yahweh came unto Abram mm -hmm. in a vision, saying, "Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield." And thy exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, Yahweh Elohim, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Yes. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house. He is my error. Hold on, you told me I'm gonna have a baby. But I don't have no baby yet. And then we said, not only in my wife's biological clock, well it done ticking. It don't the hand don't even move. And mine's is slow up to coming to a halt. But you keep telling me I'm gonna have a child. But like my brother Hawkeye said. Against all conventional wisdom. Who's talking about a 90-something year old man, 75 year old man, and a 90 something gonna be a nine? Who talking about them having children? At 90 years old. He said, What? <laughs> behold. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy error. But he 
that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Not only will you have a child, but one day your seed is going to be so numerous that they'll look like the stars in heaven. So I'm not only promising you to go from childless to having a child, I'm promising you that you're going to give birth to something so great, so enormous, that the world can't contain it. They'll be so magnanimous that they'll never be able to be stomped out with my blessing upon them. And right now, Abram is getting around he said I ain't got nothing and I don't have nothing and there's nothing here to show that this is going to happen matter of fact you're telling me I'm getting ready to defy all odds that's what you're really telling me I'm getting ready to go against everything that man know up to this point and that I know about you up to this point but after he thought about it, what did he do? What did he do? And he believed. He simply believed. In Yahweh. You said it. You said it. It had to be so. He believed him and it was counted to him for righteousness. It even became belief is a part of righteousness. Did y'all see that? Oh, yeah. We always talk about being righteous. Well, part of being righteous is your belief. Hallelujah. Is your belief. That's part of righteousness. That you believe. And the, because belief is what's going to help the Almighty started to do the work he had to do. That's why he told a king of ours in the book of Isaiah. So you can have belief and the Almighty will start to work. And you cannot have belief and you're going to stay in the rut where you at. And it might handicap you. For look at what the Almighty said in the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Isaiah Chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. No, Verse 1. No, no. Hallelujah. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Yotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, and the trees of the wood are moved with the wind, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said Yahweh unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz. Go and Siar Yash, Siar Yasha, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the foolish field, and say unto him, Take heed 
and be quiet. Fear not, neither be quiet. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of risen with with Syria and of the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach, of let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiah. Thus said Yahweh Elohim, It shall not stand. Neither shall it neither shall it come to pass. Now hold it. I can see the Syrian army. I can see Remalia. I can see everything around me that's tangible that's going on. And they're putting things in play and in motion. And I can see it in effect. But you're telling me that what they're doing is not gonna stand. And I don't have no assurance of that. Huh? I don't have no assurance of that. So it comes back to what? Believe. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is risen. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a nation. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. And look at what the Almighty said. If ye will not believe. If you won't what? If ye will not believe. If you won't believe them. Surely ye shall not be established. You, it won't be established. The fact that you don't believe, it can cut off. It can cut everything I'm promising you. It can cut it off. I won't even establish you. Because you won't believe. Hallelujah. And in not believing. If not believing, especially not believing me, you're apt to act on something else. And so I can't establish you because you won't let me be me. You won't let me work in your life. You won't step back. You don't have the strength enough to step back and say, I believe. You do your thing. I'm just going to stay right here for a minute. And you do your thing. And you let everybody know. Including me. But you let everybody know who you are. But if you won't believe. Then. The almighty. Might not. Work effectively. Might not work effect. Because sometimes we won't believe and he's still going to work effectively. Go to the book of Habakkuk. But he's showing us that our non-belief. Because that's what's happening amongst his children today. We won't believe. Therefore, he can't work. Not in the manner in which he promising us. We won't believe in his salvation. So he don't bring it to us in the manner in which he promised us. Hallelujah. Now in his own time, for his own glory, he will do whatever he see fit to do. And I want you to read one verse to show this, because that's what he said in Habakkuk, the first chapter, fifth verse. Habakkuk chapter one, verse five. And that's what he's doing. He's talking to his people. Behold, Behold ye among the heathen. You that are among the heathen. And regards the wonders 
marvelously. And regard Yahweh wonders marvelously. Well, I will work a work in your days. That's why I said we have to see him in everything. We have to know he's in everything. We have to know the Almighty's hand is he is the Almighty. Many people say he's the Almighty, but then you limit him. If I say the Almighty, that means he's the Almighty. He's unlimited. Now I say he's El Shaddai, because that's what El Shaddai means. Elohim Almighty. If I say that, that means he has no limitations. But we say it, but there's limits to what he can do. No. Consider all his works and marvel at them. Marvel at them. He said, for what? I will work a work in your days. Which ye will not believe. Which you won't believe. Though it will, though it be told you. Though it be told to you. And that's why I go back to what my sister said earlier. It's not the little kids only that have a problem with believing in the Almighty God. It's all the people. It's the elders. It's the men and women. Therefore, it's the children. Now, they have a little excuse. Thank you, son. They have a little excuse because they have you. They have the... They have youth on their side. So they still got some growing to do, some maturing to do, some experiencing to do, like my brother High Kyle was saying. But what's wrong with the grown folk that won't believe in the Almighty? Even after all we've seen. After all we've seen. And all belief is very short. But know again as well, this is personal. It's personal. And it's nothing that it's nothing that you could do for somebody else. It's something that they have to they have to find. All you can do is convey the message. Give the information. And well, like I said, when I'm speaking to my kids, I, I tell them things and then I say, and they say what they need to say. I say, well, we'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Ain't no big arguments. No knockdown draft. You'll see. You'll see what I'm saying have validity or not. Huh? But it's just, And that's the same thing I was told when I was young. Huh? Believe me. I mean, ain't nobody on that stuff. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It's a new day. Ain't no new day. Nothing new under the sun. Come back around. Hmm? There's an old TV show, and then I'm going to get comments. The old TV show from my era. It was called Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, yeah y'all remember Ripley's? Yeah, Ripley's Believe It or Not. And they still rerun it, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So you believe it or not, but we're going to find out. And when the children or youth are questioning the Almighty, then have them search him out. Don't have to blast them and, and make them feel small. Or, no, let them, they have to search him out. They have to search it out. You go search it out. You go prove that the word of Yah is false. Go against it. It might be how they search it out. You go ahead and go against it. I found, then they'll come back and say, I found it to be, I found it to be the truth. We don't want to go too far. But they have to. 
you know, it's like their grandma. You know, they do this, do that. They need to stay close to you. They need to. I, I say, yeah, I feel that way too. I said, but they grown. They getting grown. Mm -hmm. I can't chain them in the basement. Right. I can't walk with them no. They get. They becoming grown men. As grown men, they gonna walk. Huh? As I tell them, you can't be afraid of life. But they believe. To believe, to know, and to understand. Not just believe. I want to believe the Almighty. We didn't know him. Get to know him. And that's what Brother High Cow was saying. Get to know him. Because he's right here. Get to know him. I like said, you say people come to classes. We got the week. New moon after new moon. But are they getting to know y'all? Come in here listening to me. I applaud y'all. That's good. But that's not getting to know y'all. Come here, spend a few hours. That, that listen. That's not on the. That's not getting to know y'all. Go home, as he told the prophet. Meditate day and night. Even if you ain't read, meditate, study. Yes, sir. Then if you have some come to class. Well, this is what I saw. I perhaps will get the spirit of wisdom, not of understanding, that and discernment that y'all can talk about it. But get the knowing. Mm -hmm. Just because you're young, that don't that you you go home and spend enough time on your tablets and your YouTube and your TikTok. Instagram will take a couple of them hours, take one of them hours at least, and say, Hey, let me read a whole chapter of Genesis. <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> let me read a whole chapter of Deuteronomy. Let me read Sam. Not because my mama told me or the Moray told me or I was in class, but let me pick up this book and let me read something. Let me get to know y'all. And you don't have to wait till you become 30, 40, 50, and you think you're old and a good time of life done pass you by. Now you want to find the creator. Let's read this one last thing in the book of Ecclesiastes. Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. No. I wait till I, the youth. That's what they feel. That's how they feel. I, I, I wait till I'm about daddy age, mama's age. But right now I gotta have fun. Well, we want you to have fun too. Your daddy and mama still like to have fun. Right, I know that's But while you're having your fun, don't forget the creator. Ecclesiastes, we're going to read 11 and verse 9. Then we're going to go to the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Because in your youth, see, that's why some of our kings at the age of 8 could sit on the throne. Because the Almighty was with them. Ecclesiastes 11. Verse 9. Verse 9. Yes. Rejoice, oh young man. Ain't nobody trying to put the clamps on nobody. We want you to have a good time. That's why we tell you some of the things we tell you and we tell you to believe us. When we tell you now, we want you, we want your life to be you be rejoicing in it. So that's why we might tell you, don't fool with him. Don't fool with her. Don't go here. Don't go there. If you are gonna go, hey. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to that. You take it that we're trying to put clamps on you. 
We trying to make sure that you enjoy your life and that you be here to be able to enjoy your life. Hallelujah. Or at least give yourself the best chance. Right. But sometimes we done been there and seen that and done that and know what that looked like. You like rejoicing? You like being carefree? You like ripping and running and going? Well, that's why I'm giving you these instructions about, man, don't do this. Don't do that with your homeboys or with a young woman. It ain't time to do that. Because I'm telling you, if you do that and the ramifications of that come to pass, yeah, I'll be there for it, but that's yours. Your life is altered. Your life is changed. My life isn't. Mm -hmm. So sure we want you to rejoice, young man, in your youth. We live it up. Huh? Not many respond. Live it up. And let your heart cheer thee in the days of your youth. You should be happy. And walk in the ways of your heart. Go ahead. Your ambitions. Huh? Walk in the ways of your heart in the sight of thine eyes. But, watch this caveat. But know you this, that for all things, and then say when you turn 40, for the things you do when you turn 50, for the things you do with 60, he said, but know this, do whatever you will. But know this. For all these things, Elohim will bring you into judgment. See, some of the young folks, they won't even believe this. And that's all right. But as the song say, you will know. <laughs> you will know. Just keep that on your mind. While you're trying to discern if there's an Elohim, if there's a divine presence, if they just know that for all things, the judgment will come. No. Me and my son this weekend, the movie came out on the heels of a, there's a sequel on another movie. And at the end of the movie, it's a superhero movie. He said, he tells him, he said, man, we, we saved the world. And he said, yeah, he said, but we broke so many laws. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? He said, we broke so many laws that ain't yeah. supposed to be broken. Yeah. And he tells him, he said, the bill always come. comes due. <laughs> yeah. He said, you won't yeah. believe me, but I'm telling you, telling the, the bill always going to come, come due. When you tampering with things, mm -hmm. not a, the bill always going to come due. Yeah. Understand it. Yeah. So we can applaud ourselves for what we did and we say, that, but understand, right. the bill always come due. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, it does. So that's why I said, you can rejoice, oh young man. Let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in your ways of your heart. And in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, mm -hmm. Elohim will bring you into judgment. Not only you, me. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. That's why some fathers are trying to some fathers are trying to educate their sons because, and he's not just talking about the day where you wake up and the great day of death. He's talking about judgment, period. Because we've right. seen judgment placed on us. Yes, Man, sir. if I could have went back and did it like this. Yes, sir. Because I would have done it differently. Yes, and the judgment of y'all might, I know it's, it's with me. His mercy endures forever, but I know his, his judgment is with me. They said, therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and, and watch this and put away evil. From where, sister? From your flesh. And you're never too young to do that. 
You're never too young to do that. Remove sorrow from your heart and put evil away from your flesh for childhood and youth are vanity. So remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Remember now. Don't talk about later. You can still be, if you're worried about being cool and hip and acceptable, well, man, don't worry. People are doing their own thing anyway in this world today, and they ain't worried about it. They forge in their own way anyway in this world, and they ain't worried about it. So you might as well forge the way of the Almighty in this world, and don't worry about it. Hallelujah. I'm worried about being hip, cool, slick, yeah. being socially acceptable. What? Yeah, we were there, weren't we? Yeah, we were there. Huh? Remember trying to be socially acceptable. And how many of them people you're trying to be socially acceptable with is around you now? Yeah. And some of them that you were trying to be socially acceptable with, you looking at them. And they in a they in a state that you like, wow, wow. is that my boy I used to hang out with? Yeah. Yes. Dang. Yeah. He look Bam. ten times. <laughs> I know I got, but he looked like he been through the <laughs> ringer. <laughs> wow, you scratch your head. Man, I'm glad I didn't. If that's what that life did, I'm glad I didn't get in that with him. And with them, because they look rough, boy. Yeah. Look like like them chewed them up and spit them out. Yeah. But this is what we were worried about, huh? This is why we talking to them. Because this is what we were worried about social being socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I don't know, I can't do that. Yeah. You good, you a good girl. Hmm? Right. They had a ball player. Because it's a ball player, people try to make fun of him. Tell me, well, he's squeaky clean. And he's too good. He's a goody two shoes. Because he has a wife. And he has children. And guess what? When he gets done playing football, he goes home to his wife and his children and takes care of them and spends time with his wife and flies to go on vacation with his wife. And Wow, he's he's really operating in goodness, and she's happy. He's a square. Well, they had one boy on that played with him. He said, "I wish I would, if that's being a square." He said, "I wish I could get there." He said, "That's why I'm glad he don't worry about all these people talking about." Him. He said that man is happy, his wife is happy, his children is happy, everybody around him is happy. He said, it's funny, we all trying to pursue that. He said, we acting like we happy. Still be hip. Still be cool. But with the most high. Yes, sir. Remember the creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not. Again, don't wait till the calamity. Don't wait till your life hang in the balance. You laid up somewhere. Oh, uh, but dad, now I want to find the Almighty. I know, son. Father weeping, mother weeping, you weeping. But when the day is drawn near, we now say, I have no pleasure in them. I've been following the Almighty good, bad, and indifferent. Huh? The day is drawn near to me. I can say, like that song, if anyone should ever write my life story, for whatever reason there may be, you'll be there between each line of pain and glory. Because you're the best thing 
that ever happened to me. Hallelujah. Huh? You'll be there in every line, pain and glory. Mm -hmm. But what they will be able to write is you the best thing that ever happened to me. Even before I even knew you, you were the best thing that ever happened to me. See, it took me some time to find out who the Almighty is. Y'all are blessed because y'all being birthed into the knowledge of the Almighty. Don't have to struggle with shedding off some things that you learned and picked up. Y'all being birthed into it. Very blessed. Take advantage of it. Serve y'all while the sun or the light or the moon or the star be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out the windows be darkened and the door shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about in the street. Or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl broken, or the pitcher broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. For then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Elohim, who gave it. We have time and we don't have time. So there's no time like the present to walk with the Almighty God. That don't mean you're going to see him physically. You walk with him by doing and delighting in his way. You want to know if the Almighty is real? Walk with him. Do what he has laid out to do. Yes, sir. Taste him and see that he is good. Yes, hallelujah. Honor him and he will honor you. Hallelujah. Trust in him and he will not fail you. That's right. Be diligent to him and he will direct your path. Yes, yes he will. Commit yourself to him and he will be with you. Yes. And the power and the force of Yah with you, you are almost assured to succeed because there's nothing too hard for Yah. Nothing too hard for him. So believe in Yah. Trust in Yah. Search for Yah. Then he will give you understanding of him and you will find him. You will find him. And all the assistance you need to find him is around you. Mother, father, and my brother, like I said, people that know the Almighty, they, they're with you to help you. Believe in them. Trust in them. And you will be and you will be successful. No man is going to achieve everything on his own. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any comments? From anyone? I'm a five. Oh, praise be to the most high Yah by uh by saying Shabbat Shalom and Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Uh what Moray was teaching about was very serious when it comes to our youth. 
It's an old saying that says you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can teach, but the best way to teach your children is to walk it, period. They can see. They see what you're doing, and they know what's right. But it's up to them. It's not up to you. You done did your part. But all praises to God, it is up to the children to make that decision, just like it was up to you to make that decision. The word of God is so simple. So easy to understand. It's up to you to be obedient to it. That's the whole key is obedience. God said I love obedience more than sacrifice. So you have to do what you can. Teach your children what's right. But the main thing is to walk your walk so they can see. Remember when they was little kids? How whatever you did, whatever you was eating, they wanted to eat. Because they, they see. So trust me in knowing that if your child is walking a path that is outside of what you taught them, it's because they chose to do that. Not because if you was doing now, if you walk in that way and you're doing those things that the child is saying that, hey, well, mama did it, well, daddy did this, this is the way they're doing things now, then you can't really get mad at them about what they do. But when you're walking in the way of God and they see it, they got eyes to see this is what the word said. Let those that have an ear hear what thus says Yahweh. That's his word. Hallelujah. And I want you to read one last thing for me, my brother. As we get ready to go on the break, and then we have a question, I will get to it. But that comes out of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And I want you to start. Yes. Verse one. Verse one. It came to pass after these, after this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them others beside the Arm the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, "There cometh a great multitude against thee." From beyond the sea, on this side of Syria, and behold, they be and has and has a zaman to mom, which is in in Jedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and yeah. set himself to seek Yahweh mm -hmm. and proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of Yahweh. Even, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek Yahweh. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of Yahweh before the new court and said, O oh, Yahweh Elohim of our fathers, Art not thou Elohim in heaven? And rule is not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art none, art not thou our Elohim, who, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land? Before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built there a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us. And he said, Abraham is friend forever. And that's a 
that's not something bestowed on everybody. Probably yeah. Because that's a relationship. And what friends do, friends can believe in one another. Huh? Then you know how strong the relationship was. Abraham was his friend. He said, What? And now built. And I built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our Elohim, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before Yahweh with their little ones, their wives, and their children. As a family. As a family. Right. Huh? Right. As a family. Hallelujah. All Judah. The wives. The children. The family. That's what was there. They stood, stood there. Inquiring of Elohim. Continue. Then upon Yahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Eiel, the son of Mataniah, a, a Levite of the sons of Asa, came the spirit of Yahweh in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye all, Judah. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus said Yahweh unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Same thing he spoke to Ahaz. Go ahead. For the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. But Elohim. It belongs to Elohim. Tomorrow mm -hmm. go ye down against them. Mm -hmm. Behold. They come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Yahruel. Go down there and look on them. I want you to even go and look on them. You'll be able to see them. Go ahead. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Mm -hmm. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. All I want you to do is go see, go see the trouble. Don't run from it. Go see it. But stay yourself still. And see the salvation of Yahweh with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for Yahweh will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground in all Judah. And the, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before Yahweh, worshiping Yahweh. And the Levites of the children of, Goh of, of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Kohathites stood up and praised Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe Yahweh Elohim, so shall ye be established. Believe 
his prophets, and so shall you prosper. You have to believe. Hallelujah. That's all y'all, that's all they had. Because they weren't instructed to have nothing else but belief. And he said, believe y'all. And believe at this time, he said, it's prophets. So in dealing with belief, believe, that's what I said, Dave, to us. Believe in y'all. And believe in some people that know the Almighty. Believe in them. You believe in your parents. Believe in those that know the Almighty. So that you can prosper and so that you can be established. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the five on the dock. Hallelujah. See, Brother Aaron is getting better, ain't he? Yes, sir. Yes, huh? sir. Any final comments? Oh, yeah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, sometimes, when we talk about how much we talk about the um, sometimes, us even as adults and children, we tend to like things because they're easy. <laughs> And when things get hard, you know, we just like it the easy way. But we got to also remember for the adults and for children that just because it's easy don't mean it's the right way. You got to work at life. Life is not just like, you know, just every, like, you know, it's going to be easy every day. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a task. It's a journey. So, you know, we got to remember that too. That just because it's easy don't mean it's also the right way, you know, Sometimes we, we get we get so used to that. Like, oh, because it's easier this way, then I'm gonna do it this way because of what such and such said. Or oh, mom trying to use like, oh my mama said this, or my grandma said that, but we adults now, and sometimes you know, as it's for children too, you know, things that are easy, you know, they just easy, but you know, you have to work at things that make it even better for you and yourself. You feel more like you accomplish something when you work at it. So we got to remember that too. Just because it's easy don't mean it's the right way and that's what it should be. We got to work at things. Just like a job. If you don't go to work every day and just be like oh it's going to be an easy day. That's why it's called work. So you know life is work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't mean it's the right thing. Don't mean it's always going to be that way. Because it can be the right thing, but it don't mean it's always going to be easy. Yes. So there's this, as they say, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Yes, so you had you, but you got to work through, you got to work through that. And my sister said so beautifully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are there any other comments from anyone as we close out this, this portion? Cause I believe all y'all be beautiful people. Hallelujah. When I look at some of you have no proof of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, mercy. But yes. So That's it in the nutshell. Like I said, one thing I want want to stress is, is you can't strengthen somebody's belief. That ain't gonna happen. That's on them. You can help. You can show them. You can show us. You can't strengthen theirs. We pray that they that they find it. And uh, another th another thing, they gonna question. People gonna question. Job questioned. He questioned his faith. He never cursed the Almighty, but he questioned his he questioned his faith. He questioned why things happened and what's happening to him when they started going wrong. Right. 
And the Almighty never has spoken against nobody doing that. But your belief in the Almighty never went nowhere. No further comments. Then we are going to break. We'll be back. I said it's 5.05. We'll be back at 6.05. And I will address the question that I have on the floor. Most vital question. Uh, well, yeah. So I definitely have to get to it. It's not one that can linger on till next week. So with that being said, and if anybody have any questions they want to send in from my way of the internet, please feel free to do it. Over the break, we can still entertain them. And that's why we tell our people listening, send your questions in. Don't just have to sit there and listen. Because I know there should be questions. We will get them and try to entertain them as well. But if there's no further comments, from anyone, we are going to adjourn this portion. Be back at six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Brother. Oh, wait a minute. I always give the brothers a chance. Hey, brother knew I'll hear him call on too. That's why he said that's right. Get a sister. <laughs> Get a sister. He said, Ooh, I believe in y'all. <laughs> My daughter. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for blessing all of us. Thank you for making it to another day. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Father Yahweh. Yah is righteous all the time, both day and night. Hallelujah.